Welcome back to What RT Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the GWE100, it's a tier 10 German SPG, and this one's located on the south spawn of Fisherman's Bay under the command of DJ Nick of Red Unicorns. Battle started. Well, GWE100 carries a 21 centimeter Morsa howitzer and they did theorize that this tank would actually carry uh, the big 30.5 centimeter Skoda design mortar. Um, but with the design limitations that um, Wargaming have taken, the liberties they've taken with designing this particular vehicle, um, they've actually just stuck to a 21 centimeter mortar, which is third biggest gun in the game. Now, the GWE-100 was a design that started in 1943, part of the M. series. So it's um, based on the E-100 tank. And DJ Nick is aiming towards the enemy. It's an Object 260 up at the center line, styling in on it. Fires around off. Oh, it went long loaded behind the object 260. Reload is quite long, it's over 35 seconds, uh, or just, just around about 35 seconds. So we've got um, some time to talk about the rest of the GWE. Well, it's like the E100, it has those rounded skirts around the tracks and they help to protect it against splash. So really the only way to kill a GWE100 is to get a direct hit on it. This near miss won't do as much damage as it will to, say, a GW Tiger. Object 260 rounds out. Direct hit! That's a nice hit, that one, 385. Now, although these shells are capable of doing 1100 alpha, they can only penetrate up to 53 millimeters of, am uh, of armor. So it's very unlikely they're going to get through the thick skins of some of these heavy tanks and medium tanks that we're aiming at. We'll fire another round of the Object 260. This time, it's splash off that building for 296. Now, of course, if that had been a real building, then the building would have just dissolved under the shell and the Object 260 would have taken very little damage other than it's just stun. But the shockwave probably would have shaken it a bit. Kind of nice to think that maybe in the future, Wargaming will have buildings which are capable of being destroyed by RT fire, which means you'd be able to get an enemy who's hiding behind one. And there's a Wizzy 111.58. Just on that corner, side scraping, we fire around in and get a direct hit. 377, that's a good one. It's just taking some damage from that super conqueror as well. Oh, now that's unusual. We're looking at an FB215B. That's a British tier 10 heavy, not the Death Star, which is of course the tank destroyer. And there is a Type 5 heavy. Japanese tier 10. Now it's an all tier 10 game. Fire another round in, this time at E100. And he got a direct hit for 571. So he's so far he's collected 1,600 hit points of damage. Game's been going four minutes. T57's trying to get at that E100. I think he's coming around the corner. Our E100 has moved too far forward and it's not really being supported as well by the, uh, his teammates behind. In fact, we just lost the Wizzy 11158 on our team, who's also in the city. And we fire around at 257, get a hit for 178 of Splash. That E100 is way too far forward. Yeah, he's facing two enemies now. Type 5 and the FB215B. Oh. 
we're three tanks ahead of the enemy. But that could change any moment. Grabs out on the type by. Direct hit. 209, but it's very low amount of damage. Of course, the Type 5 Heavy's got very strong armor. And the RE100 takes another hit. He's almost a one-shot now. And that enemy E100's moving around the corner, and I don't think our E100's going to last very long. No, he's gone. We're trying to get a shot, but unfortunately those buildings are getting in the way. I don't think we can hit either of them. And DJ Nix moved up to try and aim at that Object 260. Diving in. Rounds out. Oh, it hits the building! That's what I feared would happen with that first shot we tried. He actually aimed and the shell went long. Now I get the feeling that DJ Nick has decided to relocate mainly because there's only that Wissing 1115A defending him from the enemy attacks at the other end of the town. And so it'd probably be safer for him on the other side of the map. Plus of course with that long reload, 33.65 seconds now is the actual time he's got. He's got plenty of time to reload whilst he's relocating, avoid counter battery, and move over to the west side of the map so he's safe from those enemy heavies. Hey, okay. he's aiming for the enemy. It's an E100. It's got very narrow a field of fire on this this RT. Just checking to see if he can get the shot in. Yes, he does. And it's his first kill of the game. 388 hit points on the E100. And he's moving again. Now, it was theorized they were going to build an RT based on the GW on the E100. So you can see the, the similarities in shape between the E100 and um, this particular SPG. Of course, front mounted engine, just like on the uh, GW Tiger got an E50M coming down the west side of the map. He's dialing in. Looks good. Rounds out. Splashes him. 340 hit points. We're moving up the very edge of the map at the moment. The unfortunate thing here is that um, if the enemy is coming from the town, at the moment he's the one who's closest and most likely to spot the enemy first. There's that E50M. Can you get another shot into him? Dialing in. Almost there. Okay, ready. Rounds out. Looks good. It is! 365 hit points, he got a direct hit. Now he is right up against the edge of the map here and that might slow him down as he's moving up, up to the west side. Yeah, it is slowing him down now, so he needs to adjust his path. Yep, he's done that. I don't know why that E50M came back, that's a bit odd. Well, hopefully he'll be able to spot for us and tell us where the enemy are. Then we know where the FB215B is and we know where that E50M is. Dialing in. Rounds out. Well, it stunned him, but it didn't actually do any damage. Now, one of the things actually that is a note actually on, on these um, the later war artillery systems, the German were actually toy tinkering with the idea of having dismountable guns. The guns would actually um, form uh, on a platform, and they could be operated outside of the SPG. 
Okay, he's loaded, ready to go, and the enemy's shown up. It's a T-57 Heavy. He just killed our E-50. Dialing in. Rounds out. Oh, we fired too soon. That narrow field of fire I mentioned earlier actually hindered us. because he, he just got reticle blue at the wrong moment. And he fired, and it actually uh, meant the shell landed behind the T-57 instead of on it. He's having a look at that Type 57 Heavy and an FB-215B. The Object 268's been killed. The only problem is he's right up against the bunker at the moment. I don't think he's noticed that. Uh, there's a bunker right in front of DJ Nick. And he ought to be careful he doesn't uh, shoot into the bunker because that will destroy him. Well, he fired at where the Type 5 Heavy was last seen. But now we've spotted one of the enemy tanks. It's the FP-4005. The Object 140 found him. And we're desperately reloading. And it looks like the FP-215B is going down to try and help. And he's taking fire from our Badger. Can we get a shot into him? Oh, we've lost sight of him. Oh, and he snaps the shot off, but no, doesn't do any damage. And the enemy's lost their RT, uh, but we've lost our Object 140. But we do know where two of the enemy tanks are. The FB-4005 and the FB-215B are on the west side of the map. Now it's three versus four. We've got a Badger, a Griller, and of course DJ Nick. And there versus a FB-215B. Oh, tree went down. A T-57 Heavy, who we know is in the south. A Type 5 Heavy in the center line. And their FP-4005 on the west side of the map. I think that tree going down will probably have been the FB-215B. But I suspect they're coming south, so... In which case, the Badger's going to be the first one to spot them. The Type 5's been spotted in the centre. Turning the vehicle to match. Almost loaded. Rounds out. Direct hit! And here comes the FB-4005. Just as I said, they were coming south. They, they were... I haven't seen the FB-215B yet, but Badger's going out to deal with the ship bomb. There he is. And oh, we got one round into him. That's good. He's a splash kill now. We can take him out with one near miss. And the gorilla's moved over as well. And there's the FB-215B. I think DJ Nick's got... Oh, he's fired prematurely and he's hit the bunker. And he's stunned us. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's the big worry. If you go up against something hard like that, you can actually hurt yourself. We lost a massive 277 hit points to a premature firing. I don't think we were even dialed in already to hit that FB215B. So, yeah, unfortunately, we've also lost our griller. Here's the FB215B. We're loaded. We get the kill shot. This time it works. 165 hit points, but we were seen, and I think we were seen by the FP215B because we were close enough. And he's diving down into the dip, but I don't think that's a very wise decision. He's been spotted again, as he did that, and I think it's the Type 5 Heavy who spotted him because the T57's in the cap. It's two against two now, and there's one minute left on the clock. The question is, do we shoot for the Type 5? We're just too close to that ridge line. We're going to have to pull back or go back high again. I don't know why we dropped down into this ridge, other than the fact that obviously we spotted. But does he shoot for the Type 5 or shoot for the cap to get the reset? I think he needs to get the reset. Yep, he's decided to do that. Now, can he find... Oh, the yeah, Type 5's been killed! 
Can he find the last enemy, the T-57 Heavy? And he's got him! He's killed him at the last split second with 15 seconds on the clock. He gets victory. Wow. That was close. And here's the end of battle stats. It's an ace tanker for DJ Nick in the GWE 100. He also got a bruiser medal uh, for getting at least five critical hits. He got 15, a gauze medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. And by getting that reset at the last second, he managed to get a defender medal as well for getting at least 70 defense points. Let's have a look at the team scores. Well, he didn't get the uh, highest amount of damage. That actually went to the FB217 Badger. He got 5,491 hit points of damage. Didn't pick up the high caliber, though. Um, when it came to uh, the next highest score, it was the Type 5 Heavy with 4696. And then came DJ Nick with 4457. When it came to kills, it was the Object 140 on our team and the Type 5 Heavy on the enemy team. Both got four kills apiece. And when it came to... Uh, uh, DJ Nicky managed to get three, and so did the T-57 Heavy, the one he killed right at the end. And when it came to base XP, it was DJ Nick who got the highest amount. He got 1,068, and then we got the Badger with 986, and finally the Object 140 with 963. So he fired 20 rounds during that game. He got eight direct hits, zero penetration, 17 splash. Damage of 4,457 hit points, of which 4292 were at more than 300 meters. I think the closest hit was actually on the FB217. Uh, 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 was it 217 or was it 219? Um, but it was certainly the, um, uh, the tank that was actually closest to him where he was spotted. I think it was the FB219B. Yes, yeah, so we can just check that actually now. Um, the FB215, 215, 215B, that's it, yes. Get it right. And uh, he damaged seven of the enemy, killed three of them, and did stun assistance of 1,138 hit points off 13 stuns. And he managed to get 91 defense points. So that T-57 Heavy was only nine seconds away from capping out at the end of that game. Um, although there was 15 seconds left in the game to uh, it being a draw. He received 69,689 credits got 8,363 credits from personal wishes payout, and after repair and ammunition resupply, and he didn't use any premium rounds whatsoever, he actually ended up with a profit of 22,178 credits. He received 1,602 XP, times two for the first victory of the day, personal wishes payout of 192, so he took away 3,396 experience points altogether. So yes, he was incredibly lucky, not stupid, um, very lucky, actually, in that game. That last shot on the T-57 Heavy, I really thought that he was probably going to fire it in and it wouldn't get a hit, and then the T-57 Heavy would cap out for the win, even after his teammate had just been wiped out. But, uh, oh, he was so lucky to get that shot on target. It splashed the T-57 with enough stun to actually, uh, or enough splash to actually wipe him out and won them the game so congratulations dj nick if you enjoyed that replay please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it'll be your replay that i'll be featuring in the next video